So I want to explain a little bit about the ivory business, natural material versus treated material. And as you can see, there's the bark comes right off the tusk naturally, and it can have some nice colors. And this uh, finished product, as you see it, is worth about $200 an ounce. And the rough, as you see here, is worth about $200 a pound. So quite a difference in value, and I want to explain why. So this finished piece was made from the picture on the left. You can see a lot of the blue went away. A lot of issues to deal with, like you see up above here, curves, rotten material, uneven thickness, and that all takes ability to learn how to deal with. I have other videos addressing that, but here's an example of filling in cracks with uh, glues of different kinds and learning how to blend. And this is the end product, uh, considered minor repairs. And on the next section here, you could see the outer part of the tusk is beautiful blue. But then you look at the inside and it's all rotten. Sadly for us, um, rot is what partly causes the color. It's decay that makes the color. That beautiful color is rot, blistering, warping, cracks, and the more of all of that you have, then the better the color and the, the higher the value of the end product. And so this material that I get is about 50,000 years old. It's fossil. It's old. It's cracked. 99% it, of it needs help. So the end buyer of a finished product normally wants the best in all the details, but the person supplying the raw material wants to get paid and the person who makes the knife wants to get some decent material at a good price. And as the seller of the raw material, I can offer perfect blue all natural for $200 an ounce. But a lot of people can't afford that and a lot of times you can't tell stabilized from natural. I also don't believe in waste, and what am I going to do with 99% of the material? It's perfectly fine, it's real ivory, it's beautiful, it's magical, and I want to try and promote it, even though it needs a little bit of help. So one option is a very, very fine front that visually is all natural, but it's going to have some enhancement on the back where you can't see it. Another option is to dye it and stabilize it, and if a good job is done, you cannot tell it from natural, as you can see in this picture. Don't try and fool anybody and make it look natural. It can look really cool, deliberately dyed and glorified with beautiful colors. It can be made to look natural, like this picture, compared to this all-natural picture. And in the next picture, stabilized again. And another common issue is the bark is very, very thin and not usable for anything, so I can laminate it to a backing, sometimes wood, sometimes other ivory. Here's a picture showing the edge view of that. And all of the uh, scales have to be handled by hand, individually, all sanded and uh, done in the shop. I have a picture here showing what working the sander is like, and uh, you have to try and get it even square mat sets, and that all takes some amount of ability. Analyzing takes a certain amount of equipment and knowledge. Uh, here is some material coming out of uh, a vacuum with the resin, showing what that process is like. It's possible to use only resin and no dye, and all that does is harden the material. But personally, uh, as a seller, people want blue and special colors, and I can add that to the dye and the, the resin, and uh, that increases the value normally. And I also have a special process where I soak it in more than one dye, and I soak it in one end and then another end, and try and make it uh, as cool looking as I possibly can. So wet, impregnated material has to get wrapped in foil so the liquid doesn't leak out and it hardens the material, hardens the resin. But even after coming out of the resin, I have other things to deal with like curves. 
And so here I show how I can split a curve, but I still have a slight curve. And as you can see, big pieces can be warped, twisted, hollow. So one good way to fix that is to uh, level it all off on the back with resin and then sand it flat. And then at some point, I have to take all the pieces I've worked and try and find matches. So if people buy raw material from me, don't forget, uh, you can use all your scraps for artwork, for end caps, for guards. So not a lot gets wasted. Hard to offer a mammoth ivory in pieces thicker than a half an inch. So the delaminating growth rings. Some rough material doesn't look like it's going to be worth much. I did a rough sand on that one piece to show. And then here you can see what the finished piece looks like. So uh, it started out ugly, but it was worth the price. So are these pistol grips dyed or natural? Can you tell? And here's a knife and knife sheath. The knife is natural. The sheath is not natural. They look okay together. And this next knife is 25% resin, and it looks okay. It's not a $1,000 knife, but it isn't junk either. So I just want to let people know that, um, that treated material can be a lot less money.